lives in the west end at night. But come. Good evening, Miss Teasdale. Can I help you, Dr. Reed? Goodbye, Miss Teasdale. And be careful. Until we meet again. Why can't I forgive you, Father? Always a pleasure to see you, sir. Elizabeth, what are you doing here? I've been formally asked to witness your triumph, my dear. After all, isn't it the natural role of a woman to support her man in victory? But it's you who insisted I join the Ascalon. Please forgive my giddiness. I'm just overcome by the thrill of finally being allowed within these hallowed halls. You certainly have an inquisitive mind. It's quite something. Elizabeth Ashbury, only you can make me smile in these difficult times. And the same to you, Jonathan Reed. Now go have your little chat with the chairman. I can see he's practically bursting to hear your report. I have a boat ready to go whenever I want. These hunters won't catch me. Lord Redgrave is outside almost every night coordinating our defenses. Such an example. of some horned vampire revealing himself and singing obscure songs around the city. What is this new malevolence? I think we're safe for now. I pursued and killed the last hunter with my own hands as he tried to escape the club. Welcome back to the Ascalon Club, Lance Bearer. Please, tell us the good news. Have you put an end to the epidemic? My hypothesis was correct. Doris Fletcher was the source of the contagion in this part of town. She was probably the first to be infected. And you cleansed her before the hunters, I've been told. Well done, Dr. Reed. 
You thrust your lance and pierce the very heart of the corruption. I'm just a doctor. The important thing is, we won a major battle for the survival of London. For that, we salute you. Thank you, my lord. Now, I have another task for you. One of the utmost importance. Perhaps even more so than the previous. I'm listening. It's time for you to perform a most sacred duty for the club. I want you to recruit a new vampire. Recruit a new vampire? Are you sending me on some sort of diplomatic mission? Not exactly. I want you to make Aloysius Dawson the Ekon he deserves to be. I'm not sure I'm the best candidate for such a task. I can hear the hesitation in your voice, Dr. Reed. I admire a man of principles. But in this matter, there is more at stake than your moral comfort. It's not a moral question, Lord Redgrave. It's the responsibility of giving immortality to a man I barely know. Nonsense. Aloysius has been a member of the Ascalon for years. This is but the fruition of a long-held plan. How would you like me to proceed? Aloysius is waiting for you at the Dawson Estate. Once the deed is done, I'll join you there to celebrate this momentous occasion. Before I go, I have a few questions. All right. I'm listening. Why Aloysius Dawson? Because he is about to die. And he just may be the most influential man in England. After me, of course. Did he choose me? No, I did. My decision is very recent, to say the least, but it is entirely mine. Does he know I'm coming? He can't wait to become your progeny, Dr. Reed. Especially now that you have shown how strong your lineage is through your sister. You invited Lady Ashbury. Wouldn't that be breaking one of your cardinal rules? No women allowed. Not allowed as members, no. But considering the circumstances, I thought you'd like to have her here to witness your triumph. So it's a temporary admittance, then? Something of a bargain, considering the crisis we're currently facing. How would you like me to proceed? Don't worry. Aloysius has had many years to prepare himself. He has studied our kind for decades. So shall I just let him drink my blood? Yes. Aloysius will gratefully sup on your blood. His heart will slow, then stop. But he will rise again as one of us, an immortal. Is there any danger? Our blood alters a mortal body so deeply that some don't survive the metamorphosis. They die for good. But Mr. Dawson has been preparing himself for a long time. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave. Understandably, you have questions. Very well, proceed. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave. Are you all right, Jonathan? Lord Redgrave has just ordered me to turn Aloysius Dawson, to make him my progeny. I see. And how do you feel about this? I'd like your advice on the matter. The real question here is, why has his lordship given you this task? Do you think it's some sort of trap? Do you really want to know what I think about this? I do, yes. To make an immortal of a soulless blackguard like Aloysius Dawson will only lead to a disaster for London. The man is already dead inside. Should I refuse? Perhaps politely suggest that Lord Redgrave turn the man into a vampire himself. Don't you dare, my dear. According to what I've recently discovered, his lordship could kill you for even broaching the subject. Really? Why? I've recently found proof that the Earl of Bristol is of lesser lineage and only capable of creating skulls. Please tell me more about your recent investigation. As long as you lower your voice. 
What would you have me do about Dawson? The man is dangerous. Did you know he plans to build a wall to separate the healthy rich from the sickly poor? Do not make him your progeny. What would you do? The man's dying already. Let the reaper harvest the rotten fruit that is his soul. What would happen if I made Dawson an Ekon like myself? You would add a powerful immortal into a suffering world. An immortal who already craves authority. Maybe I could teach him control, like you taught me. Lead him down the right path. Mr. Dawson spent his life searching for a way to cheat death. I'm sure he has spent decades dreaming of how he'd spend eternity as a tyrant. Are you sure your information about Redgrave is correct? He says he's the progeny of the great knight William Marshall, who lived some nine centuries ago. That's a lie. Lord Redgrave is unable to create anything but skulls, if the poor souls survive at all. How can you be sure the information was correct? I made the acquaintance of a most interesting informer while investigating your maker, from whom I learned the truth about Lord Redgrave. Why so vindictive? You suddenly sound like you're angry. Forgive me, Jonathan. I hate myself for it, but I feel such pride in my discovery. I'm afraid I just can't help it. Which is? He did serve William Marshall. And yes, the blood he covets as a token does truly belong to that legendary knight. But he was never his progeny. His lineage is not so noble. Goodbye for now, Elizabeth. Goodbye, my dear. Please, be careful. It looks like vampires have to obey Mendel's laws when producing progeny. Powers pass from one generation to another. That's why Dawson wants me to sire him. Good evening, Dr. Ruhid. Do you know anything about a man called Aloysius Dawson? He used to be a big spender. One day, he sent three houseboys to buy all the beluka in my shop. For his brother's birthday, if I remember correctly. I see. Anything else? Less gastronomic, perhaps? I really can't say. The man is filthy rich. But you know that, of course.
I may have a look at your goods, Mr. Russell. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? Remember, don't Good evening, Miss Teasdale. Can I help you, Dr. Reed? What can you tell me about Aloysius Dawson? Never heard of him. Really? He's very well known in London. Throughout the country, even. But he a big shot or something. Never interested in politics myself. All words and no action. Goodbye, Miss Teasdale. And be careful. Until we meet again. Why can't I forgive you, Father? Remember, Women of don't let any strangers come... Good evening, old chap. Well, I won't lie. What can you tell me about Aloysius Dawson? Well, I've discovered he's quite versed in occult knowledge. So I wrote him a letter asking him to finance my research about vampires. He never responded. You need some rest. Women of all countries unite! Not mine. Good evening, Miss Ashbury. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. What do you know about Aloysius Dawson? That man is a tyrant. The embodiment of greed and selfishness. All I despise about this country. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. It's always been your house, Dad. Not mine. These leaflets were telling the truth all along. Nobody takes them seriously. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? Good evening, Mr. Kamara. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Do you know anything about a man called Aloysius Dawson, by any chance? Well, I've never met the man personally, but I invested money in some of his companies when I came to London. A brilliant businessman. Goodbye, Mr. Kamara. Take care. Hello, Jonathan. Please, come in. I remember when Mary came here with her husband and her son. What do you need from me, Jonathan? What can you tell me about Aloysius Dawson? I never met the man. I know Clarence tried to contact him recently, but I don't know why. Did Clarence recently show you documents that prove the existence of vampires? Yes, he did. And he also told me you spent a few nights gathering research for him. Seriously, Jonathan. Why feed his obsession like that? He's my friend. I thought it might help him rest, instead of going outside at night. Tell me, what are your thoughts about vampires? Gibberish and poppycock. Dracula was a good book, 
But these documents were just mumbo-jumbo. I burnt them all as soon as Clarence went outside again. Goodbye for now. I'm so sorry for your loss, Jonathan. I need to find information about Aloysius Dawson. What can you tell me about him? Don't trust him. He's looking for the same thing I was. Uh, rats? Uh, no, uh, not rats. Uh, something else. I don't remember. I must go now. Goodbye, Miss Billow. Yes, Mr. Jonathan. What can you tell me about Aloysius Dawson? Not much, sir. Mr. Dawson's house used to be a good house with many servants. I heard he fired them all recently. Goodbye, Avery. Please watch over me. Of course. Hello again, Mother. Jonathan! Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, son. Dr. Reed, still conducting your nocturnal survey? Do you know anything in particular about a man called Aloysius Dawson? Who doesn't know the man? I think he intervened personally to put an end to the police strike of last August. What else can you tell me about him? Aloysius Dawson is exactly the kind of powerful and influential man who could commit murder and get away with it. With just one phone call. What are you investigating? Well... My two missing persons cases have been solved. By you, it seems. Are you just that lucky? Or do you know something I don't? I was lucky enough to find them both while conducting my investigation in this part of town. Why do I still have the feeling that you're hiding something? What about the abductor? Was it the same person? I don't think so. You had better interview Miss Teasdale and Mr. Kimura on that. All I did was to lead them safely home. Goodbye, Detective Inspector Albright. Goodbye, Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm sure we'll talk again soon.
Dr. Reed. I am glad to see you again. Good morning. Good evening, young lady. My mother always prefers when people simply call me Carol. Have you ever met the famous Aloysius Dawson? Yes. A very strange man. Not very nice. What do you mean? He said he was ready to pay good money for rare books. And then laughed at what we showed him. Goodbye, Carol. Good morning. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Miss Price. You know you can call me Carolyn, my dear doctor. Do you know Aloysius Dawson? Everybody knows him. He's only been to my shop once, though, looking for rare books and other intriguing antiques. Did he buy something from you? No, he left quickly. He almost laughed at my goods. Mr. Dawson may be a rich man, but you can't buy good manners. But isn't Aloysius Dawson known for his philanthropy? That was before his brother Robert died in an aeroplane crash. Since then, the remaining twin has turned into a heartless tycoon. May I look at your... It's always a pleasure to... I hope you can stay a little longer this time. Good evening, Mr. Baker. Hmm. Why do I always... What can you tell me about Aloysius Dawson? I've heard this is a man who has searched for his place in the world for a long time. I hope he found it. Goodbye, Mr. Mr. Baker. Hello again, Dr. Reed. What can you tell me about Aloysius Dawson? You should ask that question to my brother instead. Personally, I've not seen Aloysius for many years. Goodbye for now, Mr. Baker. Jonathan Reed. Can I help you in any way? Is there anything you could tell me about Aloysius Dawson? Aloysius Dawson? Yes, of course. We met on several occasions. With time, he got deeper and deeper into the occult. He's not the only one. It's been quite the fashion for several decades. The Golden Dawn, for instance, is just one example. True. Aloysius was a member of the Golden Dawn until 1900. Then his thirst for dark knowledge grew. I'm talking forbidden texts, readings which blackened his heart. Goodbye, sir. Until we meet again. I rarely wander, yet it amuses me to converse with your kind. Never lie, but they are never easy to read. Oh! <laughs> 